Now, what I've described so far is the classic uh, pulse oximeter, which is widely used in many applications in medicine. Uh, but in research now, we're starting to branch out and use uh, some variants of pulse oximetry uh, for more advanced purposes. One of the more advanced uses of a very similar technology um, is white light spectroscopy, which uses the full spectrum of light um, to create a signature from uh, a tissue after measuring uh, the amount of light that's reflected back from that tissue. Um, now that signature can tell us uh, a variety of things that pulse oximetry cannot tell us. It can tell us uh, the actual oxygen content within that tissue. Um, it can also tell us the volume of blood within that tissue, which pulse oximetry cannot tell us. There are a variety of limitations of pulse oximetry in that it's a derivative and it only tells us the ratio of oxygenated to deoxygenated hemoglobin. It does not tell us um, the actual content of uh, oxygen. Now we previously described um, the role of the uh, pulse in uh, clearing out a lot of interference um, and driving our, our um, reading. Now um, capillary beds do not have a pulse. They are a pulseless um, vessel. This uh, renders pulse oximetry useless if you're trying to measure um, the very interface where uh, tissues are being oxygenated. So some of this newer technology, including white light spectroscopy, allows us to measure the actual oxygen content at the capillary bed as well as the blood volume within that capillary bed, two parameters which are very useful to us. As surgeons, we're very concerned about uh, what's called an anastomosis and the blood flow to that anastomosis. Now, an anastomosis is simply where uh, we reconnect uh, two tubular structures. In my case, uh, we reconnect a uh, resected stomach uh, to the esophagus. And when we go to reconnect that, if it were to leak, uh, the contents that are in the stomach and the esophagus are so toxic that they can cause a patient to die should it leak out of that, um, that lumen into the uh, peritoneal cavity or into the abdominal cavity. Um, it's been well established uh, in medicine that adequate perfusion, that is adequate blood flow to both of those structures when you put it together um, is imperative for adequate healing and to ensure that that uh, connection, that anastomosis, is well sealed. Accordingly, we've started using uh, white light spectroscopy, kind of the, uh, the more advanced pulse oximetry, uh, to directly measure the amount of blood that's being delivered to each of these organs to ensure that we have adequate blood flow before we create that anastomosis to prevent leak and to prevent uh, the complications associated with that link. Another critical use of white light spectroscopy has been um, in uh, patients who have undergone a stroke. Pulse oximetry is not useful to uh, the brain, and you cannot directly uh, measure uh, blood flow in the brain using pulse oximetry uh, because of limitations of getting uh, your transmitter and your detector uh, across the tissue. However, white light spectroscopy simply emits light into the tissue and measures that light and it's reflected back uh, from that tissue to the same point. Uh, as a consequence, a white light spectrometer can be placed um, directly into the brain and can measure the amount of oxygen being supplied to that portion of the brain after a stroke. Researchers looking at this as a possible way of monitoring patients with stroke uh, to monitor the adequacy of their therapy. Most of the pulse oximeter uh, readings are based on empirical fits. Um, we unfortunately don't have much data on uh, the uh, scattering characteristics of uh, other tissue that we're measuring. That is, the, as we previously mentioned, the, the fat, collagen, fingernails, uh, bone. Uh, we also don't uh, have a good understanding as to how well these tissues reflect light and scatter light. Um, so it's hard to uh, use that data uh, in a more theoretical fashion to adjust these uh, pulse oximeter media readings. Because the path length between the LED and the detector uh, is the same for both wavelengths of light, that is for both uh, emitters and both detectors, um, the, uh, the absorption between uh, the two does standardize for uh, path length dependence, so it does cancel out uh, any path length effect. There are particular reasons we've chosen the two wavelengths of light that we've chosen for pulse oximetry. These are the two wavelengths at which uh, the absorption coefficients for each substance, the oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin, uh, are the most different. 